Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover some common user interface design approaches and how to recreate them within Twine itself. Many interactive fiction, dating simulator, and visual novel games share common user interface designs. Understanding these can help in creating an experience for a player that draws on their existing knowledge of how to play for a new game or story. Let's look at a first example here, a dialogue wheel. Using Harlow 2.0 alignment markers, we can create the same general user interface of a dialogue wheel. It's also found in many Bioware games. <clears throat> in Mass Effect Andromeda, for example, the four choices, the upper left, upper right, bottom left, bottom right, correspond to tone, an emotional, logical, casual, and professional. We can recreate that using alignment markers here, as I've demonstrated, with our upper left, upper right, bottom left, and bottom right. Those are four different options. We can also recreate the same experience using HTML tables and a little bit of CSS, as I'll cover when we look at the code here. But we can do the same thing, upper left, upper right, bottom left, bottom right, recreating the same thing using either HTML tables if we'd like, or alignment markers using Harlow 2.0. So us look at a choice prompt. A common user interface design found in many visual novels uh, made with the RenPy engine is the choice prompt. It's actually called a menu within the RenPy library engine uh, in Python. But it's where a player is given a set of choices and they choose one and the prompt disappears. That is a choice prompt. So using a modal and some CSS to style it, the same effect can be generated to give players choices without leaving the passage itself. So for example, we click on make a choice and we're given three choices. And notice we can't do anything else until we make the choice, and then it closes. Different choice, different choice. But each time we're giving the choice prompt, or menu in RenPy, and then we make a choice and then it closes. So this is a way as a player progresses across passages or through a story in Twine, if you want to force, force a choice on them, that is, uh, you can do it this way, using a modal, or of course just present the links within Twine itself. So finally, we have limited time responses. So games like the Walking Dead series by uh, Telltale or Queers in Love at the End of the World by Anna Anthropy both use limited time responses to great effect. And as you can see here, we have a timer counting down. I have three seconds remaining to make a choice. Two seconds. One second. Which is not quite a second. And then... Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> so there are two different examples here of the Walking Dead series, as well as the Batman series and others by uh, Telltale, um, as well as, like I said, Queers in Love at the End of the World, which is actually a really great example of how to do this in Twine, uh, which I recommend people check out by Anna Anthropy. Both use limited time response as a great effect. So this is a short amount of time. It's usually, as I demonstrated, a few seconds, uh, and the player must suddenly make a choice from among those given to her, um, or they're out of time, and in the case of Queers and Love at the End of the World, the game ends, uh, and you're forced to sort of make different decisions uh, based on what you know and what you're presented. So the other fourth, fourth user interface design that I'm presenting here is actually one that's native to Twine itself, that is links, as well as using the sidebar to forward and back. So as you as you saw here, I started on start, went to dialog wheel, went back, went to choice prompt, went back, and made turns within Twine by going to passages and it reversing or redoing or undoing. So this is also something you can keep in mind. While you can of course create dialog wheels and choice prompts and limited time responses and all of those can be used to great effect and in different stories and games, it can also be narrative ground, narratively grounded in different ways. Don't forget that you can also just create a pretty useful and user-friendly user interface design by just using links within Twine itself, and a little bit of spacing here. So coming back over to the code, we see the same general setup I just, co I just covered by using start, and it points to three passages. And this is a great way to keep in mind that the editor can help you can help guide your design of the user interface for the player at the same time. So you, as a designer or programmer or writer, can see the exact same setup as the player will see when they're playing it. That is, as we see here, start points to three different passages, which also means we can undo back to that beginning start passage as well, as I showed. 
So we can select any of these and then undo and redo back. And that's a great thing to keep in mind as well with these sonar fancier user interface designs. But let's look at each of these in turn. So as I discussed, from start it points to three different passages and it's very straightforward. Moving over to dialog wheel, we see the use of a Harlow 2.0 alignment markers, the leftmost marker, the rightmost marker, and then the end, which stops all of the alignment. And then I'm cheating here with a little bit of a, with an HTML space, left alignment, right alignment, stop alignment. And then again, as I discussed when we looked at it, using HTML tables and a little bit of CSS, we can also recreate the same thing. So it just depends on how you would like to do it. You can do it with alignment markers, if you'd like, and you can do it with HTML tables, or you could just simply list the links as well, and the three different ways of approaching that. Using what is a dialog wheel, found of course in many Bioware games, uh, and in many other games as well. And let's look at that CSS here for just a second. So to look at the story style sheet, we click on the name of the story, in this case common UI designs, edit story style sheet, and it's this right here. I changed the padding to 15 pixels for table data. That gives it a little extra padding to replicate the same feel of the alignment. So the alignment will automatically do percentages based on the size of the passage, based on the size of the page, based on the size of the browser, based on the window and everything else. Whereas HTML table is usually more fixed, and in this case I gave it a little bit extra padding, 15 pixels. Uh, but depending on your usage, alignment may work better because it will be based on whatever is available to the twine and available to the passage and shown. And HTML tables will always be a little bit smaller based on uh, HTML table spacing. So moving over to the choice prompt, we see the use of a modal here, as well as a number of different functionality that's new in Harlow 2.0. So the first thing we're doing is condensing all of this white space that's within the hook using the name tag modal. So it starts out as hidden, which is what this little parentheses means. And that's part that's new in Harlow 2.0, where you can automatically hide hooks initially and then eventually show them using the show macros. I'll cover in just a moment. And we see two nested division elements, div elements, using some extra CSS to present them in different ways. And then, since we're collapsing the white space, which is what the brackets mean, we need to use the break rule element. So new line, new line, new line, and present our different choices. And in each case, when we click on them, it replaces modal, which is what we're looking at, this entire hook, with nothing. As well as when we first click on show, it shows all of this. We make a choice and it replaces it. And we can show and replace and show and replace and make choices in this way. It presents the same way as a menu in RenPy or a visual novel. That is just a choice prompt. So we, you, you have to make a choice. Here's a prompt. You have to make a choice. Uh, and then the modal closes and we can move on with the story. And finally, we have a limited time responses. And the code's not much more complicated, but it uses a couple of different macros in combination here. So the very first thing we're doing is we're setting a variable timer to the value of 5, which will come into play in just a second, as well as we have a hook and we have a name tag for that hook, limited. And then we're using the link macro three times here for choice one, choice two, and choice three, as well as using the replace macro to replace the content of the name tag associated with this hook, which is limited, and notice how Twine helpfully highlights it for us. And we're replacing it with nothing, just an empty hook here. So anytime we make a choice, it replaces all of this with nothing. As well as down here, and we're collapsing the white space again, so this code doesn't use up any space within the passage, we're using the live macro, which counts down, or counts, that is live rotates, for whatever time you tell it to. In this case, every five seconds. So we're setting the timer to it minus one. So we're counting down each time, repeating, and then each time we have timer seconds remaining. This is live every five seconds, which is not quite a second, but sort of mimics it enough to get you a feel for it here. Because if it was every second, it'd run very quickly. We wouldn't be able to read it. <clears throat> if we set timer to it minus one, so we can keep track of seconds. So if timer is zero, that is starting at five and counting down, then we stop 
and then replace it as we were doing up here with nothing and so it erases this hook and these choices and then write out of time. Now finally if it's not zero then we give the number of seconds remaining and of course this isn't quite five seconds it's repeating every five seconds live repeat every five seconds but it gives the illusion of a counting down similar to every five seconds. Uh, but as Queers and Love at the End of the World shows, when you do 10 seconds, it's very fast. Uh, 10 seconds runs very fast, and I actually recommend checking that game out as a great way of, of doing limited time responses and sort of forcing narrative choices. It's a really great example of that. Uh, but as we see here, here are actually four different ways of creating common, u common user interface designs. Uh, we have a dialogue wheel, similar to Bioware games or a number of other games. We have a choice prompt, similar to a lot of visual novels where we have to make a decision. Uh, and we have a limited time response, which counts down and it forces us to make a decision really quickly. As well as the very common and, of course, incredibly useful user interface design of Twine itself where we put links and passages and they point to other passages and it connects the way we design or program or write with the way the player plays the game at the same time. And these are four different common user interface designs that are common in interactive fiction, they're common in visual novels, and they're also common common in dating simulators as well. Thanks for watching.